Kaya, it is such a pleasure to be talking to you today as we announce our 2023-24 season. And I am so proud that a very important part of that season is your new opera, Innocence. It is such a propulsive drama. It's such a propulsive piece that you and Sophie and Alexi have created. And I, I will never forget coming to visit you uh, in Paris, Kaya, a, a few years ago before before the premiere and you showed me a diagram where you had laid out on a very very detailed basis what needed to happen in every minute of the piece how many minutes you needed to make a character change to make a harmonic shift and to make a dramatic shift was that something you had done before in writing other operas or other pieces or was that a technique that you employed uh, for innocence particularly no, this this is the way I work. Uh -huh. And um, in fact, uh, when one uh, starts writing an opera, it's better not to try to too many new things. Mm -hmm. I always do it to challenge myself. But uh, this thing about the time, it's something that uh, I really like. Uh, doing to have a timeline which is really very strict and uh, before starting to write uh, maybe not even music I I already know how I divide the music and how I how the tempi will be and time time shifts and tempo shifts and uh, different acts and so on and it's very comforting because uh, writing um, writing a big piece like this uh, it takes very much time here it take, took uh, many years i have to say i was just so moved by seeing that and just the level of thought and discipline and um integrity that you you brought to that whole compositional process kaya and and i think it's good for for people to hear just how long it can take sometimes for an opera to come into existence as you say a number of years composing but also the years around it preparing and developing and uh really refining the the concepts of it and really a, a very difficult subject, one that will resonate particularly with American audiences. And I just wondered, you know, because of, of those years that you were in the middle of innocence, how did you cope with being at the heart of such an emotionally challenging subject? Um, did it did it affect you personally while writing it? Were you able to find some way of distancing yourself from the the really difficult emotional challenge of this piece? No, I don't know how my fellows, uh, uh, fellow composers in historic time or today, how they deal with uh, mm -hmm. the emotions. But uh, I'm always, since my first opera, I'm always uh, living with the characters. But in fact, there is so much pain and... Uh, and uh, strong feelings here that mm -hmm. uh, it was very tough piece to compose. I, I cannot begin to imagine what what toll that it, that exacted on you emotionally as you went through that. And I'm curious how you felt when it when you saw it came to life. Of course, it was delayed by a year because of the pandemic, but Aix en Provence gave the premiere in 2021 and. What what did it feel to see that that work come to life finally after almost a decade of uh, conceiving it? It made, gave me a huge satisfaction when I started seeing that uh, how well it worked and that how much it touched also other people. I'm happy to say that I I think it's a strong piece. A necessary piece. Absolutely necessary piece. Thinking about emotion and the the depth of impact of emotion in innocence, I've, I think often about how the opera stage is very unique in its ability to go deep with 
emotional and with challenging subjects. And you know, having written a number of operas that do do that, I wonder what is it about the art form of opera? What is it about the combination of all these different art forms that happens in opera that allows us to go to this very deep and emotional place that uh, really, again, you, you have created an exemplar of in innocence? I think it's because it's an artwork where several arts encounter. And then I think it has very much to do with the story and text. Because here we can identify with the people or at least their feelings and text and music together and these persons. I think it makes so many different communications links between arts, but also in our brain. The text can be very touching, the text and music and the way of expression and then the whole theater aspect. I think that's the reason that I have continued writing operas. Well, Kaya, I, I truly believe that what you and Sophie and Alexi have created here uh, is a 21st century masterpiece of the art form. And you have taken the combination of all of those elements and created something that is both intensely dramatic, but also intensely personal and emotional and everything that the opera stage is capable of and uh, shining a direction on, I think, the kinds of stories and the kinds of ways stories can be told. But uh, in your hands, it is uniquely done and extraordinarily done. And I'm just so excited for us to be with your music here in San Francisco uh, in June of 2024. It seems like a long way off, but I know we'll get there very soon. And just thank you for entrusting your music, your work, your artistry to our stage here in San Francisco. It is gonna be one of the greatest privileges of my career to have your work here on our stage in our season. So Kaya, thank you for sharing this time with us today. And we look forward to welcoming you back to San Francisco next year. Thank you, Matthew. And uh, let's not forget that this music was played for the first time in San Francisco. It was indeed. Uh, when our orchestra, the San Francisco Opera Orchestra did a reading of it back in, I think, 2019, and you came out with them, with Clement Mount Takash, who will be conducting it here. And uh, it was amazing to see just the reaction of the opera orchestra to your music to you being there it uh, you're right it, it the music began life here in san francisco orchestrally indeed yeah thank you thank you so much kaya 